Can I make that better? Oh, shit. Oh, uh, we're live. We yeah. are live. A little too late. They might, <laughs> they might see you all fuzzy, sir. They're going to see you fuzzy. Nah, I mean, it looks super clear. All right, let's go, ladies and gentlemen. If you are in the room, someone already left a comment. Oh, no, that's just us. Okay, so we don't want to hear it. Hold on. Let me um pin this comment to the chat already. There he goes. All right, here we go. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. We got some people in the room. Good evening. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that share button so we can get more people in this room. We are going to talk about business credit tonight. Oh, man. People have been waiting. Oh, man. I got my wrong hat on. Hold on. Oh. Hold on. Let me put my you, you ain't feeling like money yet? Okay. Okay. Oh, there he is. We're just we're just regular right now. We'll, once I feel better, we'll put the different hat on. Okay. <laughs> won't you change out that gold? Won't you change out that gold mic while you at it? Put uh, the get put the regular mic up. Sorry, sir. Um, we don't have regular mics around here. Um, sorry. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> me, me neither. Me neither. <laughs> me What's neither. up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome What's going to on, y'all? What's going on, y'all? Where y'all coming in from, man? You know, you guys know the rules. Go ahead and let us where you come in. Let us know where you coming in from. We need to we need to see how far we're we stretching across the continental United States and maybe internationally for no reason. <laughs> Make sure you hit that like button. We need you to hit that like button so we can get more people in this room. Let's get it cracking. Invite your friends, your family, your lovers, your, your side pieces, whoever you want to talk to, get them in the room. Okay. You know, them side pieces need to get that credit up. When uh, when let's go. When your girl and your man kick you out, side piece going to have to have your back. <laughs> We got Georgia, North Carolina. Okay, we got Houston. You got LA, Philly. Oh, nobody cared. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't start he's, no an stuff. Eagle, he's, he's an Eagles fan. That's why I'm trying to give him a hard time. Let's don't go. Start Let's no go. stuff won't be no stuff. And hit the like button when y'all get up in here, man. We finna drop some fire. Come on, y'all. How do I we super gotta... chat? Can they super? I don't think you can do super chat unless it's directly through YouTube, huh? Yeah. And yeah. don't worry about don't worry about super chat. Don't worry about super chat. YouTube gonna take thirty percent of that anyway. Don't worry about super chat. Hey, I'm sorry that you're not allowed to super chat yet, sir. But I am. Okay? I can't super chat. <laughs> no, bro. That is a monetized feature, sir. I don't think. <laughs> you know, I'm about taking you and your monetization, bro. Let's go. Hit that I'm gonna like be there. Button. I'm gonna be there in two weeks. We got 144 people in this room. I need y'all to hit that like button a little bit more. Let's get it going. Tell us hey. where you're from. Mike, let's have a conversation about this like button situation, bro. Why yeah, people man. don't like why people don't like to hit the like button? It's because what does like, what does it tell on you? The, they're like, well, why why would I hit the like button? I don't know what they're talking about yet. You it's know free. What I'm saying? It's free, but we hear like button. Let's hit the like button. So I don't know about Mike's going rate, but my going rate for thirty minutes is ninety seven dollars. Uh, mine's a hundred. <laughs> I bet it ain't. Let me go check. I bet it. I bet yours is ninety. <laughs> no, it's not, sir. I don't offer it, discounts. I'm sorry. Is it a hundred? Is it a hundred dollars? Yeah, it's a hundred dollars. Yeah. I know. I need to up my rates, man. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Hit that like button. Tell so us you where you guys, from. you guys get an hour from me and Mike. At least an hour. Yeah. And we, we've been free. doing this. We've been doing this weekly, right? For free. Y'all can't hit the like yeah. button. We got hundred thirty. Hit that like button, man. Twenty eight likes. Anyway. I'm about to give y'all a bunch of sauce, man. We're going to talk about business credit, business credit cards, business lending. These are all my business credit cards. I can't show them all because some of them have numbers on them. Okay. Um, yeah. So we're going to talk about business lending. I just dropped a business lending video on um, TikTok you know, right before this. Oh, there's an echo, sir. You got a little, you got a little echo? I can hear you. Mm. Yeah, it's coming from your side. Mm. Mike Sinatra, can I cash app? I don't know why you want to cash app. I appreciate that, bro. Um, but it's not necessary. Uh, just so you know. Do you, Mike? Mike, do you have me on another another display? Is your phone still on, bro? Anything? No, no you're good now. No echo now. All right. You're good now. All right. Echo is gone. Mike, what's so, your YouTube channel? Mike the Credit Guy. Mike the Credit Guy. Can't miss me. Okay. <laughs> And we've just, got like, we've got like just Jay Woodfin is mine, just in case you, you're not following me too. 
It's the it's the it's the Mike the credit guy that has like 123,000 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Slight, slight flex. <laughs> Please Super hit that flight. like button. Let's go. Better to care LLC. That's right. Hit that like button. Hold on, hit bro. That no, share button. Hold on. We Let's get everybody in here. Up. We got we got Texas in the Texas in the house. We got Rancho Cucamonga. Okay. Love it. Rancho. Okay? <laughs> That's my old stopping ground, big dog. And uh oh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, oh, why you gotta put that up there, bro? You think here you're we go. Take it ass, Mike. 123,000 subscribers. Can somebody send this oh, man some stars or something? Oh a digital gift? Anything that helps? <laughs> you sound like one of them Sarah McLaughlin <laughs> commercials, bro. I want to put the sad music on behind you and just say, hey, anything helps. If listen, you could adopt a Mike the Credit Guy for just 19 cents a day, yo, listen, anything helps. Let me explain something. Don't be upset because you're not monetized on Facebook. <laughs> they can't even give you a star, okay? <laughs> I can get stars on Facebook now, bro. No, you can't. Not YouTube, bro. No stars. If I got 50 get... stars the other day, bro, and I didn't even know what it was. And then I looked it up. I was like, oh, I get little chips for this. I got, they, what is it, 30 go, cents? Ladies and gentlemen, let's go. I appreciate it. Toronto, Atlanta, Houston, OKC. We got L Lynn Cox City chicken barbecue sauce. Okay. Lincox okay, City. we got barbecue sauce in the house. Let's go, okay? Hey, um, you need to shoot me a message. If your barbecue sauce is really that dope, I'm all about it, Okay. <laughs> As you can see, I'm not a small guy, so I like barbecue. Okay, let's you ain't go. Got to be Phoenix. a big boy to like barbecue, dog. That's true. That's true. Phoenix. But I'm a big. I'm a big boy too. I bet I weigh more than you, Mike. Yeah. yeah. I bet I weigh yeah. more than you, bro. I'm, I'm at that COVID thick stage right now. You know what I'm saying? Bro, COVID, <laughs> COVID over, dog. COVID over. You ain't got. <laughs> <sighs> no, it's not. You better stop. Okay. Oh my God. Let's go. Let's go. We are going to talk business credit, business credit cards, business lending. We're gonna talk all that. Let's hit that. Let's hit that like button, okay? Tell us where you're at, where you're from. Invite your friends. You gotta hit that like button. Man, they ain't gonna do it. Dog. They're not gonna do it. They, yeah. they, they're not gonna hit the like button, bro. It's, yeah. and it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. So let's go. Yeah, we got a lot. We got a good amount of people in the room, man. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. So you know, all right. So you guys, there's a ton of videos across the internet about. I'll just say ways to procure tons of business credit super fast um but most of them don't explain to you in the beginning of the video exactly what the qualifications are going to be most of those qualifications will disqualify you even if your credit doesn't but what they don't ever t ever tell you is the other side of business credit exactly what happens once you procure business credit and what that can mean to your business and your financial life now mike has been dealing with business credit for quite some time on Straight the profits. loan side, on the loan side, on the credit card side, I got a little light flex in business credit. I got a, almost a couple hundred thousand dollars in business credit. Not too many business credit cards. I don't particularly use business credit. I'm a big invest in your business in cash. Let the let the business produce its own whatever. If it dies, it dies. Um, but what most people do and what most people are attempting to do in this new day and age in business credit is procure business credit without having a fundable business. Mike, talk a little bit about it. Say it again now. <laughs> most people, most people are attempting to you utilize business credit without having a fundable or credible business. And uh, let me let me expound a little bit before I pass it to you. I can't tell you guys how many people get on discovery calls or credit coaching calls with me. And the first thing they want to know is, can I help them with business credit? My first question to them is, what's your business? Well, here's what I'm going to be doing or or here's what I am doing. OK, how long you've been doing it? Oh, I just started three months ago. OK, well, what do your receipts look like? What your sales look like? Oh, well, you know, we haven't got that far yet. But you're looking for two hundred fifty thousand, a hundred thousand, twenty five thousand in business credit. And my first question to these people is always this. Why would the banks give you money and how are they going to get it back? You don't have a proven method or, 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 or a proof of concept. You don't have a method of getting customers. You don't even have a viable product nine times out of 10. But yet you want, for some reason, your brain tells you, I need business credit as seed money to start my business. But what you don't understand about seed money is that seed money comes from, at the very least, a proven business model.
with a very respectable, if not hyper profitable business plan off the rip. And none of y'all have even heard of any of these things. So what I want to do in this particular live session or podcast, whatever you want to call it, is I want to have a come to Jesus meeting with my following. I can't convince everybody else, but I can stop y'all from ruining y'all's lives because the moment you do get approved for a business loan or a bad credit business card, payments start coming due. The moment you start spending that money, you start racking up that money, you start racking up that interest. And now not only are you in a race to pay back those loans, but those loans have to be paid back from a business that hasn't made sale number one yet. This is the ruination of your entire life. When you talk about a company or a bank or a credit issue or coming after you, don't worry about what happens with American Express and a personal loan. Don't worry about what happens with the big blue bank that rhymes with face and personal business credit or personal credit. Mess around and jack up business credit. It's a whole different level, a whole different nightmare. So how we're going to what we're going to go through in this particular podcast is not just how to procure business credit, not how to set up your business properly for business credit. But what to avoid when trying to go for business credit and when when you should and when you shouldn't go ahead, Mike. So, yeah, um, I'm going to give you all a really great example. I just dropped a video on TikTok talking about a very nice way to get business funding. Now, one of the biggest requirements you're going to need for any type of business funding, you need at least three months of statements. You got to prove where your money is coming from. OK, um, you're not going to get any business lending. If you can't prove that you have revenue, uh, why would a bank want to give you any money if you don't have any proof of revenue? Um, that's a really big one. And people just don't get that because there's too many people out here telling them you could do this, you could do that. But rule number one, three months worth of bank statements proving what your deposits are. That's what they're looking for. Two, you need to have a very old bank account. Um, they call it seasoned. Yeah, yeah. A seasoned, seasoned bank account. A seasoned at least, bank account. At least two, three years old. Yeah, but you can get business lending. Um, and I'm gonna give myself as I'm gonna use myself as an example here. I was able to secure business lending um right before I hit two years, which is not normal, but I had the revenue behind me and I had the good credit to back me. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember that revenue and good credit. Okay, so when people say, you know, um uh, <clears throat> get loans and business funding without your EIN, I mean, sorry, without your social, it's possible. Mm -hmm. But to get to that type of lending, it's going to take you at least two years to build that business credit file. And at the end of the day, you're going to make it even stronger if you can personally guarantee it. It's just that simple. So there's no way for you to get around this. There's no way for you to get business funding if you don't have the revenue. So the PayPal business loan, it's called a loan builder. It's actually probably, I don't want to say one of the simplest, but it's pretty easy. You need to have a minimum of $15,000 worth of revenue in one year. Okay. Now, if you're not making $15,000 in revenue in one year, I mean, what are we really doing here? You know what I'm saying? Okay. Because that's not a really big target to hit, but a lot of businesses don't make a lot of money in their first year. Okay. But what you but what you what you what you're not saying, Mike, is that, yeah, minimum fifteen thousand dollars of of revenue per year. Right. Or per for the last year, whatever, or last two years, three years, whatever it is. But the issue with that is, is what kind of what kind of loan will that procure, bro? That's what I'm like, getting. To. You know what I'm saying? I'm you, so, to, you know? My bad, bro. Let me back off. No, nope. that's what I'm getting to. So okay. now let's say you secure this loan. OK. Business lending is one of the most riskiest businesses for lending. Okay. There's no such thing as easy business lending because it is the most riskiest type of lending out there. If you go under, guess what? The bank goes under with you. Okay. So the interest rates are absolutely astronomical. Okay. I've seen them all the way up to 30% yep. interest rates and people are like, Oh my God, how does anybody do this? And like, Okay. Yeah. It's not easy. Okay. So one, the interest rate is going to be garbage. Okay. Now two, the repayment. Okay. That's the best part. Uh, I don't want to say the best part, but it's the worst part. People think that, oh, I'm just going to have to pay a monthly payment. Right. That's it. Right. <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay. 
in order to secure real business lending and to build a business relationship, because you're building a relationship with this lending entity, they want to see that you can make weekly payments. Did you hear me right? I just said weekly payments. Okay. So let's say you take a loan for $30,000. Okay. You have to pay it back in 52 weeks. That's a one year loan that you have to make consistent payments every week. I've been able to, to um, accomplish close to half a million dollars in lending this past year, but I have the revenue to back it up. And guess what? If I don't pay it, they're going to come after me. Okay. And it's not, it's not just the revenue you have to back it up, Mike. You actually have the net profit to be able to repay your loan, bro. It takes a profitable business. And let me just make this, I'm going to make a real flat out statement here. You don't get a business loan to seed fund a company to prove that your company is worth it. That's going to crush you. You only get a business loan to expand, not establish. You get a business loan to expand a already proven, already successful, con already profitable concept. You got a bunch of orders for something. You need more uh, inventory. You got a bunch of clientele and you're trying to expand and maybe open up an area where you're um, buying ads or something like that or hiring talent for something. You're expanding. You're expanding on something that's already positive, already, already profitable. If you're not looking at business loans in that regard, if you're looking at business loans as a savior to your company, you've already lost. You've already lost. Yep. Go ahead. And, and you know, one of the biggest things that people don't understand is they think that they could just go to a regular bank like Bank of America, Wells Fargo. They're going to give me this business line of credit. They're going to give me a business loan. In order to get business lending, this is coming directly from a banker, okay? Because I talk to bankers, I talk to lawyers, I don't talk to just anybody that says, oh, no, this is how you do it, Mike. No, I talk to the, the entities directly to get the real information. In order to secure business lending with a Bank of America, Wells Fargo, um, uh, bank that rhymes with face, okay, uh, the big blue bank, you need to have liquidity you need to have liquid cash that's three times what you're trying to get okay because that's like it's like when you go rent an apartment right they want they want you to have six times or whatever you're going to make it's almost the same thing if you don't have that liquidity and you don't have good personal credit you're not going to get approved like speaking to a banker he really broke it down to me he said like you got to have liquid 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 to back up whatever you're going to do and showing the trend of the revenue that you've been building. So you have the capability of scaling up. You just need that push. So I saw a guy in a group uh, yesterday say, Hey man, I applied for this business line of credit with Wells Fargo and I got denied. I've, I've not been in business less than two years, you know, um, and my revenue is not that strong. And I was like, why would you think that Wells Fargo is going to give you a bunch of money, bro? These banks are looking to invest in properly structured entities that have serious business plans put together. If you don't have a business plan, don't even step into the ring with a big bank. That's rule number one. They're not going to fund you. They're not even going to look at you. They're going to run your credit. You're going to get a hard inquiry for no reason. You're going to get declined. But if you don't even have a business plan put together to get business lending from a big business bank, bank account or, you know, business banking entity, you're not going to get the funding, unfortunately. So go ahead, bro. No, nah, man. I mean, that you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. I'm just pinning this message to the top. So if anybody has any questions, by the way, I just put a link in the chat, uh, pinned to the top of the chat so that you guys can click the link and you guys can jump on the panel with us live. We love to answer any live questions that you guys have. Uh, but really, this is kind of just, like I said earlier, come to Jesus moment to try to save our people. Um, because honestly, it's, it's our underserved community who has not been taught about money that's getting taken advantage of the most when it comes to these situations. Now, let's talk a little bit about some of the forms of business credit that's being pushed to people who, quite frankly, don't belong in the business credit category at all quite yet. We, let's talk a little bit about credit stacking. Now, this is something that almost got me very, very early in my business life, bro, because it's super easy to procure, uh, this form of business 
they call it business loans, but it's really not. So what the business, what the credit stacking business model is, is a business credit specialist or professional, whatever, that has a relationship with a whole bunch of different credit card uh, issuers will have you straight up apply for a boat. They'll take all of your information and they could really honestly care less about how much money your business is making. A lot of this is going to ride on what you think is going to be coming in the future your future revenue prospects. And so what they will do is they will use your information. They will apply for you for several different business cards. Sometimes you might get 5,000 approved. You might get 10,000 approved here, 15,000, 3,000 over here. And then what they will do is they'll put all that together that you got approved for and they'll call it $30,000, right? Let's just say $30,000 of total business lines of credit that you've got on these business credit cards. And they will then take their fee, which is typically at least 10 percent. So they're going to take three thousand dollars off the rip. And then they're going to try to help you, quote unquote, liquidate those cards, which means empty out those cards in a manner that's used by let's just more than likely they're going to use some some form of manufactured spending to liquidate those. because They'll give you instructions to get the cash out of the credit cards without hitting that um, that, um, you know, the, the penalty for taking cash out of a credit card. Once you do that. Now the payments start coming due. So you'll have 150 due from this car. You'll have 250 due from this car, 500 from this car. And all of a sudden, those interest rates are starting to stack. And yet your business model has yet to be proven. When you see these commercials about get $50,000 in business credit tomorrow, that's probably what you're going to be looking at. Get $100,000, get up to $100,000 in business credit tomorrow. This is what they're going to, they're going to straight up tell you. Here's what we're going to do, bro. I wish I still had those emails from the company that I went through when I was starting my trucking company three years ago, right before the pandemic. It scared the hell out of me how they were going to procure this because I knew about credit. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm trying to open up a trucking business. They're going to qualify me for $100,000 in business credit. They're going to take 10% off the top, which means I'm already in the hole 10,000, which means I only have 90 grand to spend on my own. They're going to then liquidate these cards for the 90 grand, which means I'm going to start having payments due on this entire $90,000. I haven't even bought my truck yet. This is a problem. I called the dude back. I said, listen, man, I've run the numbers. I'm going to have to decline. Now, most of you won't bother doing the math. You'll just be too excited at the fact that you can be approved. Next thing you know, you don't get the 100,000. You get 25,000. But now you've already run all the inquiries. Now you've already procured all the credit. It's yours. Now they've already taken their fee. You owe them $2,500 out of that $25,000. Now you're in the hole and still haven't made sale number one. So what I want to do is I want to I want to take any questions that might be coming in the chat based upon what Mike and I have already said. Now, Mike is going to give you guys some ways to go ahead and, you know, deal with business credit. He'll be he'll be opening up his business, uh, his business credit funding academy a little bit later on this year, maybe early next year. Mike will be helping a lot of you guys get it done the right way. But what we will never do is allow you guys to go in debt or to ruin your financial lives or financial futures based upon what the information is that we put out there. Any questions, Mike? What we got? Yeah, we got a good one. If you have good credit and you apply for a business credit card, what is the purpose of having an EIN and they still ask for your social? It's a great question. OK, yep. um, there's two different types of credit. There's personal guarantee credit and there's EIN credit. Yes, EIN credit does exist, okay? Um, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to be a personal guarantor. It depends on what type of lending you're going to do. It depends on what kind of business credit card you're going to do, okay? So, like, uh, that's a really good question. Like, the Capital on Tap, when it first came out, they were not doing any hard inquiries. Now, guess what they're doing? Hard inquiries. You know why? Because it's business funding, Okay. They want to make sure that they can get whatever they're going to get out of you. And another one is the Divi card. This was a good one, too. This is a good example. This is actually a charge card. It's not a credit card. Okay. But the Divi card also, that one does no hard inquiry. Okay. But guess what they ask you for? Your social. Okay. They do a soft inquiry and they scan your business bank account. They want you to hook up your business bank account to see what type of action you've got in there, if you've got deposits, if you're legit. The majority of business credit cards are going to make you do that. Um, I'll give you an example. This is a really good example. American Express. 
Um, anybody knows? I'm pretty heavy on American Express. Okay. Um, with business credit. Um, I got the first couple of cards, no problem. After the after the second card, they wanted me to hook up my business bank account so they can analyze it to see exactly what was going on in there, right? Okay, so yes, there are EIN, you know, only EINs, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to back any credit card that you're gonna have because at the end of the day, this is a lending situation. And there's no way around it, unfortunately. And by um, the way, guys, don't forget, all of this stuff goes back to the government. All of this stuff goes back to tax purposes, right? American Express needs your EIN number because they need to be able to tell the government what business that they gave that money to mm -hmm. or, or got the money from and paid it back from. All of your transactions need to be able to be traceable. And when you have your EIN attached to stuff, it's traceable back to your company. Now, while typically speaking, um, um, business credit cards don't really do much for your business credit. The transactions can be shown to show that your business is able to borrow and pay back, especially large institutions for, with uh, with large amounts of money. So those are the kinds, kinds of things that you actually want to be connected to your business. And the only way to connect something to your business financially is through the EIN number. It's real simple. Um, yeah, we, had, we had somebody up here. I think his name was Wesley, but he bounced out. Um, the, the EIN number is basically your business's social security number. That's yeah. the best way of saying it. There we go. You know, that's, that that's the best way for everyone to understand. That's exactly what it is. And that's the whole purpose of it. Having an EIN does not mean you're going to get business funding or business credit cards. OK, um, hey, I'm going to bust this one loose. I, I don't I don't feel bad about talking about this and I'm going to say it. Right Chase, on, Bank. Chase Bank. OK, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and talk about them. Chase Bank does not require um, that you have a full. <laughs> what are you doing, dog? Hey, listen, I have to I, I'm able to talk about it here. OK. So Chase Bank does not allow you to, I mean, the best way of saying it, American Express allows you to get a business credit card with um, having a properly structured business. Chase Bank has different regulations and requirements than any other bank out there. Okay. So this is where the EIN comes into play and what type of business structure you have. So pay attention to that. Go ahead. What we got here? We What's going it. on, Wesley? How you doing, man? Appreciate you jumping on, bro. Omar, if you're gonna get on after Wesley, bro, you gotta um, you gotta cam up, man. You gotta put your camera on. Go ahead, Wesley. What's good, man? Hey, I'm I'm, I'm new in the business. I just opened up a food truck. All right. And uh, congratulations, you know, bro. I'm thanks. I'm trying to uh, you know, get things going, but uh, you know, right now, you know, we're going into a, a season where like, you know, things are getting slow because the holidays yep. are coming up. Yep. And we were trying to look into some funding to get and we're about almost six months and squares uh gonna probably send us a loan offer what do you guys think about using that loan offer that they give through our credit card processor so when you get a loan off through your credit card processor they're going off your receipts right yeah. so only you they'll be able to see what you get as far as the income of money right but what are you currently spending? Number one. Number two, what are the terms of repayment? Number three, how are you going to make that repayment? If you have a successful plan in place, and bro, it's just simple math. If you have a successful repayment plan in place where you say, okay, with this money, we can sell this many more ribs or hamburgers, whatever, tacos, whatever you're doing, bro. If you can put that together and you know that you have a solid plan going into the new year, then absolutely take the money, bro. That's what it's there for. Expansion, right? But my question to you is, you said you've been in the game six months? Yes. Okay. Have you been, pro are you profitable now? We are, but I'm not profitable because of what I spent out of my personal money. So, so then that's a no, bro. That's so no. you're not. If you're it's spending not. your personal money on your business, your business is not profitable. Right. Now, you can be making money in your company and not taking a paycheck and still be profitable. But once you start taking a paycheck and the business is now negative, you're no longer profitable. So are you using your business to pay personal bills? No. OK, so right now your business is not capable of paying you personally. Number one, your business no. is not capable of paying its own bills without you putting your personal money into it. Number two. Right. right. So right now you the broke homie wearing J's asking me for two hundred dollars. Right. And my first question to you is how you get them J's, how you running that food truck. And then you're going to have to tell the bank, oh, I'm putting my own money into it. They're going to go, oh, all right. 
well, how are you going to give us my, our money back? Because you now you got to pay yourself back. You got to get to a point where you can stop putting your money in and then be able to give me my money while your business still survives. Right. At a high interest rate. Right. So what, that, do you, that, so what do you think? That interest rate is going to be horrible. I can already yeah. tell you that from a merchant, a merchant lending part. Right. Like, I try to stay away from merchant lending um, situations just because um, it's it's a much more riskier type of loan. Um, mm -hmm. Their interest rates are usually higher. If you can if you can find yourself a revenue based loan, that's going to be better. But Jay, Jay just really hit it on the head, man. You know, don't put yourself in a situation that's going to cause you to file bankruptcy, because if your business goes under, guess who's the personal guarantor? You yep. you're going to go right. under, too. And then and then also when you do, especially when you do a when you when your merchant processor gives you a loan, they have they have actual straight line access to get their money back. They're going to take money off of every sale you make. Yep. So if, they say, if, yep. if the sales you're making are not supporting the business right now and you're having to support the business out of your own pocket, bro, the moment they give you that loan, payments are coming due. So so you really going to be under the gun to make all the sales. <laughs> Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You're talking about pressure being on when your business is losing money and you know you're putting personal funds into it. That's one type of pressure. But you can at any point say, All right, scrap it, we're done, and walk away, right? Right. But you can't do that when you got a business loan. You can't yes, just scrap it and walk away. You gotta make that money back. Yeah, for y'all. That makes sense. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I would cool. say, you know, it's really it's really tough to um to see those loans and, and walk away. But as a business owner, that's the biggest decision you have to make. It's like, I, I don't want to take this money and risk the business because at the end of the day, as a business owner, you gotta, you gotta support yourself. I don't know if you have a family, you gotta support yep. your family. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? You, if you have employees, you gotta pay your employees. Yeah. You know, that's the big, that's the hardest part. Like yeah, you go so, to an event and then the event don't do what the people say it's going to do. And then I'm stuck. You still got to pay. I'm bringing out three, four people with me, and I still got to pay them. Still got to you know, pay. Because it ain't their fault that the event ain't do what it's supposed to do. You know, I yeah. still got And listen, know. listen. Um, I used to be a chef, okay. And I'm gonna tell you right now, the food business is one of the the toughest businesses to be in, and nobody talks about the fact that um, restaurants and the food service business is one of the most lowest profitable businesses. So you got to work twice as hard to make the profit that you're going to try to make. So if you get into business lending, it's got to be something long term that you can rock with and pay for. But with with your situation, you got to bootstrap that for the first year, man. Yeah, Minimum. I would say don't do it, bro. I think Mike is right. Yeah. I think if you look at the numbers, if I'm just doing it in my head, bro, and I don't know a lot about your business, but just off what you're telling me, um, I wouldn't do it. Dog. I'm going to be honest with you. Doesn't make a okay. lot of financial sense to me. Sounds good. I'll take your advice, man. All right. Cool. Yeah. Appreciate you for joining us, man. Thank Please, you, bro. Man, thanks. Yep. All right. We got Omar C and then Lionhearted. We see you up next, bro. What's All good, right, big dog? Yeah. What's going on, man? Appreciate All you for right. joining. Cool, cool, cool. Appreciate you guys, man, doing the stream. Uh, I I found Jay uh, through through just the YouTube shorts through the algorithm because I've been searching up business credit and I just and you just popped up and former military, so it's it's crazy That's how the algorithm up, just put us put you know linked us. That's what's so, up, bro. Um, Anyway, it's a, it's a pleasure to meet both of y'all. Sounds good. Um, Appreciate your question. service, by the way, man. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. And happy Veterans Day, by the way, too. Appreciate you, man. Um, thank you. So um, my question was, um, is it possible to get a a car under your business? So say say uh, you have, say you want to get a, a car, but put it under a just a business so not put your name on there and just have it under the business would that be possible go ahead big dog <laughs> i mean i'm gonna just i'm gonna say outright yes bro because my car is going to my company yeah. regardless. okay so yeah it, it is totally possible <clears throat> now lending is getting very tight right now and the reason why i know that is because i just got a, a newer range rover okay and um we went through a certain bank uh it was ally financial ally financial is um, one of the biggest lending companies for um, auto lending for automobiles, okay? They have different types of plans. They have the no PG, they have the PG, and then they have, I can't remember the other one. There's like three or four of them, okay? Um, rule number one, your personal credit's gotta be in line, okay? 
Um, if you're going to try to do it with no PG, it's going to be very tough. The limitations for automobiles and auto lending is is very strict. If you don't have a biz, if you don't have a relationship with them, they're going to cap you out between 60, 60 to 80 K. Generally speaking, no lending entity that does auto loans wants to go past a hundred thousand dollar vehicle unless you've shown a track record that you've been able to pay for that. Okay. Um, or you have an existing relationship with them. You know, they see your cash flow, but generally speaking, it's very difficult to get past a hundred thousand. 100,000 in any type of auto lending. Now, a lot of people like to do things like, you know, they'll go after a $30,000 car, 60,000, totally doable. $60,000 is very, very tough to get into any type of auto lending. Um, you have Ally Financial, you have Mercedes Benz, um, Chase Bank, you have Ford, you have um, uh, Dodge. Dodge is a huge one that has, a, has business credit features also. Um, BMW, Range Rover, every single one of these is going to go through a certain entity to get you that that automobile in that in that business name. There's two different types of way. One is no personal guarantor. Now you got to have a strong business to back that. And you know, uh, I suggest if you're going to try to go for no personal guarantor that you do not go past thirty thirty thousand dollars. You can start off with thirty thousand but you have to have strong personal credit, okay? Now, the second option is with a personal guarantor. A lot of companies are moving away from no personal guarantor. Mercedes-Benz specifically used to do this, and now they do not do it anymore. I found out because I did some investigating, and I went through the process. They will put it in the business name, but you will be the personal guarantor, and it will go on your personal credit, okay? So, what people don't understand is if you're trying to get homes, you're trying to move into anything like that, or you're trying to do any investing, now you're going to have a $30,000, $60,000, or $90,000 car on your personal credit, okay? So you have to be prepared for that. So that's why you have to be really wise as to what you choose to put on your credit file. Yeah, I think the credit, I think the question, Mike, is what is the reason you want to put it in your business name? The number one reason should be so it doesn't go on your personal credit. One that, that should be it. But, you know, a lot of people think that you can't write off a vehicle if it's not in your business name. Yeah, so that's the reason why I'm asking him, like, maybe it's not worth going with that higher interest rate, which is what it's going to be. Um, maybe it's not worth going, you know, going that route if you don't need to. So what's your purpose, bro? Because you might just be mildly, you know, uneducated on the, on the subject and don't need to go that route at all. So what's what's the reason, Omar? Yeah. So, um. And, and thank you. I, I didn't catch your name. Um, glasses. The, the Mike. glasses sir. Mike. Yeah. Mike. <laughs> Appreciate the all the information, Mike. So the um, to answer your question, Jay, uh, the reason that I want to do it is because um, I did hear about the per personal guarantor, and I'm pretty pretty sure that that's the uh, route that I would take, just because I don't have a business established enough to you know per like guarantee the funds of the uh, for the car for the car loan so hypothetically speaking i was just thinking if i can get a car uh through uh through credit and then either put it on turo and then have the payment of the car or have the payments coming in from renting out the car on turo cover the expenses the the monthly expenses of the car you see what i'm saying i don't know if, yeah. if, if i made any sense yeah um that's that's kind of what I was thinking because I, I've been seeing ideas here and there and that's where I got that idea from. And um, it wouldn't be like my personal car. It would be more us just the business and then just start off with one car just to see how it goes and then, you know, possibly get more, you know, so that that was that was my question. Why? I have I have a question for you about the Turo situation because I'm not too familiar with actually running a Turo situation. I obviously know okay. about Turo. I haven't been living under a rock, but I don't know a lot about the actual ins and outs of it do they require right. you to have the vehicle in your business name or can you have it in your personal name you i think have you can have personal. it in your personal yeah i think you can um oh. i just i personally right now don't have a car so that's why i was wondering is it should i get it under my name or should i do it under the business so well you know i, I personally i personally believe that it, it doesn't honestly really matter because either way you can still use personal liability insurance even if the 
business name is on there. The fact that you're going okay. to PG that vehicle, it's going to say your company name and then it's going to say your name underneath that on every bill. It's still going to report to your personal credit. There really is not much of a difference, bro. It doesn't even help your business credit. It doesn't. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, mine does not help my business credit at all, bro. I've well, had four cars in my business name that I've had to PG hasn't helped my business credit. Oh, it doesn't even uh, appear. That, that depends if it, if you PG and it went onto your business credit or, or if it went onto your personal credit, it's going to really depend if it's going on your, on your personal credit, it's not going to help your business credit. It has to be a hundred percent, no PG to go onto your business credit. Okay. Okay. Now the issue with that is the amount of cash you're going to have to procure a no PG business loan. And most people don't have, and like you said, maybe going thirty thousand dollars max. So, what type right. of car are you looking to put on tour board where you're going to make any money and it's going to pay for itself? Right. So that I guess that's that's my that's the thing that I have to think about next. So, um, I've I've seen all kinds of cars on there, um, and again, this this wouldn't be like a like a main source of income. It, it would kind of be something that I would test just to see like what 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 can be possible because i've seen guys with fleets of cars like 20 cars can i, 10 can cars. I put let me let me let me put a bug in here bro um okay. i have i've had a lot of friends who have tested out the Turo market in their area okay. don't fund a vehicle to test out the Turo market because accident okay. number one happens to that car bro and you asked out right, you, right. you're done that's it mm -hmm. and so you know a lot of folks when they're testing out the Turo market if they haven't gotten in line with a guru of some kind that's going to lead them through the process bro you're going to start off with a five thousand dollar car a three thousand dollar car where you're going to just get a beater back and forth to test how you're going to run this thing to figure okay. out the ins and outs before you put a thirty thousand dollar car on the line a fifty thousand gotcha. dollar car on the line you get what i'm saying so off the credit side of things bro on the Turo thing it's a huge liability can you make some money in that industry of course but it's a mm -hmm. huge liability there are some problems and you need to have a, a low cheap beater that you can figure out the ins and outs on that process with before you go putting your name and your company's name on the line. Right. To be the test subject. So don't yeah, don't even get it to death. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, you gotta do, hey, being in the Turo business, you got to do a lot of research. Um, you can take huge losses. There's a lot of regulations to, to Turo mm -hmm. with business lending. So if you try to go get business lending for an auto loan, um, and you tell them, yeah, I'm going to go put it on Turo, they're automatically going to disqualify you. You're yeah, not going to get right. the loan. You can't say that. <laughs> yeah, you right. can't, you can't say, say stuff that. like that. Um, and if you get caught, you know, running Turo with one, and, and this this loan is, I mean, this car is financed through a company, they catch you, they can pull that loan back, take that car back. So just mm -hmm. be aware, there's a lot of red tape uh, that is starting to get more and more involved with Turo because they're having a lot of issues with it. It's a great way. You want to start off really small, a Honda Civic, a Dodge Charger, something yeah, like that. Yeah. That's not the market because think about it like this. If this doesn't work out, can you continue to make this payment? Okay. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Start off really small. This is how people start. And once you hit your once you hit your, your swing, if things work out, then you can go to a second vehicle. And then guess what? You can go back to that same finance company and use that company if, if you need to. But you got to start off small. Um, and don't try to go big because if you go big, I mean, it's, it can end bad. It's all <laughs> on the line, bro. There's a huge liability. Yeah. There's a lot of liabilities involved with Turo, you know, um, mm. whether someone steals the car, someone takes right. the car, you know, yeah. um, voided, voided warranties, bro, because they find out you run into Turo, like all of these mm. things that you can't, you can't afford to take those L's, bro, especially as a fledgling business owner. So take, take those things into account too, on top of the things that we've told you about, the possible financing in the business name or PGing it or straight up personal. Um, there's a lot to think about, man. So hopefully we helped you out a little bit. Absolutely. Great, great information. Honestly, Sounds good, um, man. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate right, your support, man. Go follow Mike too, bro. Definitely. Have a good night. All right. Yep. All, right. All right. We got Lionhearted, then Alex. I'll see you, bro. You up next. Lionhearted, hey, what's, what's good, my G? What's up, hey, man? What's, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on, bro? Good? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we got you. Hey, listen, man. I just want first. I want to say, like, you know, I appreciate you. It's, it's an honor to even, you know, you guys having a big following, being able to even get on here. You know, it's a good thing y'all doing. Like, you know, talk to the, you know, locals. You know what I'm saying? So, I support, man. Man. yeah, I appreciate it, man. Oh uh, well, I kind of been wanting to get on the live. You know, I've been watching it. 
while I, you know, I, I drive trucks, like I drive, you know, CD, CDL Class A. All right. So I, I jumped in a little bit late. So I, I think y'all talking about business credit, right? Right. Okay. So, um, I'm more in the sense of I'm in I'm in a stage of where I don't know what to invest in right now. You know what I mean? Like I I, I um how you say it? I fixed my credit up. I've got it from like um like low 400s all the way up to like 730s. And I'm talking mm-hmm. about FICO from my FICO, you know, I don't Congratulations, look at man. My, yeah, man, I appreciate it. Like I don't I don't look at the the credit card, man, you know what I mean? So yeah. um so I, I'm just I'm more I feel it feels good to um be able to invest in something, but I just don't know what to invest in. I was thinking about starting my own business with trucking, like getting my mm-hmm. own truck and stuff like that. But um, is um uh, my, my my real question would be um, what I guess I guess more like what what should what what's the best thing to invest in when your credit is good? If, First of all, well, how much cash do you have? Um, I got, I got a good amount saved up. I got like around 10 K. All right. So 10 K is what you got to work with, bro. You do not invest with credit at all, (laughs) ever. You don't invest with credit, bro. Cause investing is gambling, bro. I don't care how safe of an investment you think it is. 10 K 10 K is not enough to buy an IUL life insurance policy for it to make enough money for you to actually live off that. So that's out. Um, you can't put that kind of money in stocks if that's all you have. And you damn sure can't pull the cash out of your credit. So the credit is not going to be for investment purposes. It never is. Credit is only an extension of the cash that you have in the bank. So if you got $10,000 in cash, you currently have $10,000 in credit, bro. No more, no less. You know what I'm saying? So when you, you got you to gotta flip. This is, this is a, a big problem with us having good credit is that we don't know what to do with it. So, you know, good credit comes in, in, in handy when you want to go get a new vehicle and you want to put less of that $10,000 down or put as put that $10,000 down and have less of a payment on the back end. It comes in handy when you have the money in the bank to go get a new house and you don't want a eight and a half percent interest rate. You want that four and a half percent interest rate that's out or when you want a business loan and you have an already profitable company. So I think what you should focus on, bro, and I'm going to just put this out there. Are you currently driving for a company? Yeah. Keep driving for whatever company you're driving for. Learn how to garden your credit from a 730 to a 780. Stack your bread and then figure out what you want to put that cash into and then find out what credit corresponds with that. I want to put that cash into a property so I can rehab it and sell it. Okay, cool. You're going to go, you need to qualify for a loan, right? Qualify for your first loan. You're going to need to have decent credit, but you're also going to have to have a fair amount of cash that goes along with it. Anybody who tries to flex credit to make money without putting up their cash is going to lose. It's just point blank simple. So as far as what you're talking about, what you should, you should invest in, you should invest in time. Do some more time, bro. Don't put your money nowhere. Do some time as a truck driver. Do some time gardening your credit, building your credit, getting better credit lines, bigger credit lines, lower interest rates, learning how to use your credit, bro. Watching people like me and Mike sit your ass down, dog. Don't do anything with your credit at all because that's the quickest way to fumble the bag and fumble your FICO. Yeah. It's over leveraging yourself when you don't have enough money to play the game yet. And I could say um, I've done that. You know, I recently got some lines of credit with uh, Secu of Maryland. Yeah. And not knowing how they operate, I thought like if I use the line of credit, it reports as a um, an installment loan, but it actually reports as like utilization for right. your credit. So, right. Um, but it yeah, reports man. As, a, as a line of credit, which goes against your utilization. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that, that I didn't, you know, do a lot of research on. So. You got to get educated, bro. You got to learn yeah, more, sure. man. You about to step and, into the lion's den, bro, and you're going to get bit. Yo, and it's crazy because you say you say something about uh, real estate, and that's where really I want to, because I have a lot of family members that's, you know, invested in that heavy, you know, and I really want to get into that. And I just, I, I even, <laughs> I, I was going to, like, I even, um, uh, uh, sold my car back to the dealership and closed it. I had a, I had a, I had a loan for like about three, four years and kind of hit my credit. You know what I mean? Because I closed yep. it. 
You, know yeah, you just got to gotta learn more, man. And this is one of the things that it, it bugs me a little bit about the credit industry, right? Because when it comes down to finances, you, you, you have an accountant that you go to and say, hey, I want to do this with my money. Does it sound right? And they'll tell you yes or no. When you have when you need to file taxes, you go to your tax professional and say, hey, I need help getting the biggest possible refund or at least filing my stuff. Right. So I don't get in trouble in the future. You have an, a, a tax professional that you work with and that you pay. You need legal counsel. You have a lawyer. You need uh, uh, medical help. You have a doctor that you go to. But a lot of people treat credit like it's a toy, bro. And like it ain't the real deal when it's just as serious as any of those other financial situations, my dude. So I would I would tell you like I tell anybody else. And if you really want to know what to do with your credit, you need to invest in a person like me or Mike, man, because a lot of this information, yes, is free. But all of this stuff that comes where it's targeted specifically for you, you need a tailored approach. And that's what we do, man. So I would I would strongly encourage you. Go to Mike's page. You go to my page. Hit our calendar, bro, and get on for a paid consultation where we will sit with you for 30 minutes. Go through your situation, bro, and tell you exactly what to do. And that's what I've been looking for, to be honest, man. Because You got to have it, dude. And anybody it's, it's, else who's on here watching this, if you think you're going to learn how to do this for free, and it's not going to take you all the time that it took me and Mike to learn this game, then exactly. you're sadly mistaken, man. You're going to bump. I bump my head a hell of a lot of times. I know you have too, Mike, uh, just making right. the mistakes, bro. So do the right thing. Pay somebody who's already been through what you what you about to go through. Hopefully you don't do it and can stop you from doing that, man. And you can start making money a lot faster, dude. And I'm not going to pro promise no profits, but I'll, I'll keep you out the lines then, bro. That's for sure. And the same thing goes with Mike, man. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think you need to just chill out, my G. Chill out, stack your bread, keep doing your trucking thing, man. Congratulations on that. But as far as the credit thing and investing, man, don't do that, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it, man, for sure, yep. man. Like I said, I appreciate you guys for even having me on. And yeah, I will yep. be uh, definitely um, talking to you guys personally, for sure. Sounds good, my man. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate Thank you for joining. Thank you, man. Have a blessed right, one. Take it easy, too, man. Yep. All right, we got Alex coming up. Alex, what's good, man? How are you, what's, bro? Doing well. How are you doing, gentlemen? Good, man. Good, good. What I can spoke, I do for you, bro? Uh spoke with Mike on Monday. Um, talking Lucky about man. credit credit repair. I'm signing up for a system. You get what you pay for, and uh, I'm subscribed to Mike's channel. But uh, seen a couple of your videos. Got to subscribe to yours too. It's good to see Appreciate you guys it, man. collaborate. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, well, man. At, at this Thanks point, hey, you got it. You know it, man. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you can get taken off my credit. Right now, my credit's still <laughs> trashed. I. Uh, <laughs> kind of lost everything at some point in the past, but you get knocked down, got to get back up. But it's true, uh, man. And there's nothing to be ashamed of, bro. You know what I'm saying? Amen. First step if, is the hardest. And if you don't learn from the past, then set to make the same mistakes. Big facts. Exactly. So what can we do for you, man? What's going on? Um, I had kind of a specific question. If you guys have heard of something, uh, it was a company called Genesis Capital Funding. I'm a contractor. Yeah. I do you don't you have heard yeah, of it yeah yeah you know if there's any company that's like that around anymore or i don't know so the answer is no and the reason is what mike talked about earlier man is the recession is telling everybody to take back what you've been doing and so genesis had a had an amazing product out and they're not actually the answer to your question is yes i've heard of several companies like genesis um but they're all shrinking their product portfolio and their offerings man and they have to there's no money out there right now Everything is tight. And so anybody who's still playing fast and loose with their loan products is 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 going to lose along with the people who they put the loan product out to. Everybody loses. Um, what was what, what was the product that Genesis had out? Genesis. One, and I'm a, I'm a contractor. I was looking at this earlier today, bro. Go ahead, man. Keep talking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to find that article. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm ahead, a contractor. What they or the product that I'd used of theirs in the past is. Most of what I do is insurance job, uh, hail storm restoration or down in Florida, hurricane restoration. Right. They kind of fast track the insurance process a little bit. So they'll fund, uh, I forget how much, but let's say someone has 50 grand worth of damage on their home. Insurance gives them their first check for 30 grand. They're waiting on a second check for 20 grand. Sometimes that process slows down as part of the insurance company's uh, strategy to hedge their expense for What's the storm in Florida? Seven hundred billion dollar storm, right? So Ian, or whatever it was, yeah, Ian or whatever just came through. Um, so what this company does? I'm in Texas. I'm in Dallas, Fort Worth. So hail hits every year. 
But what this company can do is, let's say I sign a 50K job, insurance check, first insurance check is 30K, uh, most of the profits on the back end. So you complete the job, get the customer satisfaction form, and Genesis would fund the second insurance check with some affidavit that the second check that came would go direct to Genesis. And so it would fast track the job. So instead of building three to four jobs a month, I could put an extra couple jobs on the ground instead of waiting 10 days to two weeks for that second insurance check. Yeah. To come. Yeah. And yeah. the reason, go ahead. There's a, there's a, there's a few of those. Um, I think they call them like builder finance companies, bro. It's something like that, uh, where based upon the job that you have and the guaranteed funds coming in exactly. from insurance companies, they will basically escrow the money, right? They'll basically give you the money knowing that this coming back to them. Uh, there's a few out there. I'm a, I'm gonna figure it out, bro. And I'll either send it to Mike so he can send it to you or I can send it to you directly, whatever you want, man. Hey, good to know. Good to know. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking. I was to... just looking at this earlier today, bro. I had never heard of it before today. I saw a video on it. And I was like, nah, that can't be true. And I looked it up. It's actually pretty interesting. Yeah, man. Insurance jobs, they pay. And I've been in the biz for like 15 years, work for different yeah. people. And uh, last company I'm working with, it's kind of a headache. feel like I'm running in circles and I feel like I'm better off working under my own name and making 100 percent of the profit instead of a, per, a commission percentage of it. That anyone that anyone that would work for me would be 1099. It's per completion of jobs. So the roofers get paid their portion, the siding guys, their portion, the painters, their portion. And right. once I collect the final check, that's when payment comes. Yeah. And, I think, uh, you know, I think, you know, your situation, you know, Genesis capitals and stuff like that, they're more like bridge loan or, or, exactly. you know, those type Super of funding companies term. that just get you from point A to point B and then they get their stuff on the guaranteed back end. Um, that's a super niched market. So you're not going to yeah. have a huge number of uh, companies out there like that, that do that type of stuff. But uh, what happened? What seemed to be your issue with Genesis? Why'd you fall out with them? Um, that was, I just haven't looked into it for a while. Uh, back in 2017, work kind of dried up, chased the hurricane in Florida, then chased the hurricane in North Carolina. Both companies, right. the prime contractors didn't pay me the way the agreement was like, I did. I spent a week inspecting a commercial property. I was supposed to get five percent of the project, and uh, last I heard, it was in litigation for three million dollars, and I never saw a penny. And okay. uh, I mean, it's part of how I hit the ground and lost everything. I mean, hate to say it, but lived in my truck for a couple seasons there. But uh, God blesses, and uh, things are back coming up. But like I said, working for this last company feels like I'm running in circles and God takes bad and works it for good and is pushing yeah. me into my own name. And uh, I'm already looking to be an insurance preferred contractor based on my experience and contacts. I just have to get liability insurance and get in. They provide quicker payment. They'll drop materials on the job and drop depreciation in two days. But for example, for their neighbors, you could lock up cash quick trying to put on five roofs that take 10 grand material yeah. on five jobs yeah. and you're waiting on a bunch of back end pay. But if there's someone like Genesis or someone similar to that, that can help fast track those. I'll give 10% no problem with a back end yeah. check just because then I can put an extra few jobs on the ground. Yeah, that might be an interesting video to put together, man. I'm going to do a little bit deeper dive into that, and I might throw something together. I know Mike's, Mike's wheels are over there spinning already. So, <laughs> hey, well, I'm, I, uh, I made a video while you were sleeping, Jay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mike just made a video right now while we were talking. <laughs> Y'all will be surprised how quickly Mike will throw up a video. I'll call Mike hey, and be well. like, hey, bro, I just read this, blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, man, I just dropped a video about it 15 minutes ago, bro. So, you know. <laughs> hey, well, it's, it's definitely a super niche market. But if anyone yeah. online is looking to make good cash quick, people in Florida are dying to have people just come work for them. You know, there's yeah. too much damage on the ground. And uh, it's a $700 billion storm. That means that by the time everyone's stuff gets fixed, all the contractors are going to collect $700 billion. So That's a good thing, bro. Appreciate you dropping that over here. Hey, I appreciate you guys' time. And it was a niche question, but look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. All good, man. I wish I had a better answer. But when I don't know, I don't know, bro. But I'm going to go find it out. So that's good. Hey, and we'll find learn. it out together. Thank you, appreciate all. It, Jay, good to, good to see your, uh, your channel. I'm going to subscribe, too. Appreciate you, man. Take it easy. All right, take yep. it easy, man. We got any more questions in the chat, big dog? I know we're running uh, right up see. on an hour, man. Let me see. What up, KP? I see KP down there. I, what up, bro? KP. Uh, let me see. Uh, I don't think I see anything crazy. 
Aaron B. Arbitrage, that's a really good one. You know anything about Aaron B. Arbitrage, bro? I do not. Aaron B. Air and B arbitrage one. Just so everyone knows, I'm not a big fan of Airbnb. Okay, I have had some oh Airbnb, ex- bro. I was like Aaron B. I thought you were calling somebody's name Aaron B. I was like, who is Aaron B, bro? <laughs> Airbnb, bro. Airbnb. Yeah, that's the, yo. That's that's so that's more. We're getting into the investing and and, I know, and I know, actual I know. business practice questions when yeah. it comes to that. That's not even a credit question. But uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I'm not a big fan of Airbnb either. But I'm a huge fan of travel nurse lodging. If y'all are thinking about getting into Airbnb stuff, you might want to look into Travel Nurse Logic. Putting, putting, it's a lot safer. You make a lot more money, dude. Um, so yeah, I put on a couple of people to travel, Travel Nurse Logic, and it's it's been doing pretty well, um, especially for like older women and stuff like that, man. Okay. All right, uh, we, we got some- we got Andres, Uncle Dre. Andres, what's going on, man? You muted, bro. Unmute your unmute your phone. Or your whatever. You're still muted. Yeah, we can't hear you. Okay, how about let's see. Yeah, there, there you go. go. There how about go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, guys? Uh, this is Uncle Dre from All Star Services West. We're a restoration company um, out here in Florida. And just like the last gentleman, um, we're part of the rebuilding process, uh, rebuilding process. We've been in business for about three years now. And um, <clears throat> needless to say, we're, we're in dire need of expansion. Right. We're doing so much work now. We're almost tripling what we've done before the storm. And uh, my question would be, was that oh, the most thing I'm trying to choose the right funding uh, for my business? And there were a couple that I noticed, like a merchant cash advance, um, which that one I wasn't really too thrilled about. Uh, um, but I want to see what would be a more better option. Um, because, of course, with my business and restoration, we need liquidity. There's no doubt about it. We need to pay for employees, materials. And with these insurance companies, you know, sometimes you could take up to nine days, sometimes even longer. So we have to float until the checks come in. And since the checks are not as secure as, let's say, oh, it's guaranteed 10 to 15 days, um, that's why we, you know, we require not a substantial amount, but just enough until the money starts to come in. Right. So I guess my question would be was um, what other funding other than like marching cash advance would probably be, you know, a, a better approach to last out until we get recuperated from the insurance companies. What do you think, Mike? Um, this is a really good question. Um, the problem with your situation is, you know, you have that whole, you know, all the way up to 90 days. And let's be honest, there's going to be, there's going to be people that, uh Oh, we don't, we lost our man. So um, there's going to be problems with not getting paid for this situation. So you're looking at, you know, 90 days, sometimes all the way up to 120 without payment before you, um, you know, uh, before you can get funding and, and get it paid back. Let's go and bring them back live. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, there you are. All right. So, so your, bi- your biggest problem is the fact that, you know, you're looking at, you know, 60, 90 or 120 day terms. I don't know if anybody does 120, but uh, we both know in construction some of these companies aren't paying out as, as, as frequently as they should. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. In my personal opinion, you know, um, me and Jay were just talking about this a little while ago that um, I don't think you should do any type of business lending. You should look into business credit cards with 0% APRs that you can stretch out. Okay. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that, but well, the first the first question to that is what's your what is your what is your credit score, bro? Just be honest. You come on, you gotta oh, be honest. Right, right now, at? um I, I if I believe the last time I checked it was I think it was uh well it ranges because of course like of course. Equifax it shows at 720, but then okay. my lowest or experience is 650. So okay. I mean, you right you right in that you right in there, bro. You right in there. How long your business been in business? Uh, since 2019. 
Okay. So you got you got you have the time. Um, and, and I'm, I, I'm I assuming that if you're in construction, that you you definitely have the revenue at the least. I'm not sure if it's profitable or not, but you definitely have the revenue. So yeah, look, look, luckily, luckily we we have not um, procured any funding since we started. But now that we have such an influx of work coming in now, I mean, just in the past, I would say uh, since the storm, the storm came in in September 28th. So we're talking about maybe a month and a half now, and uh, we're looking at close to over. 120,000 in just invoices that are waiting to get paid. So it's just kind of. I, I think Mike. I think Mike was definitely tracking in the right direction, man. So Mike, you're going to tell him to go for the, the business the business industry. credit cards. Yeah, yeah, business credit cards, man. Um, you know, um, Capital on Tap is a really good entry level card that can get you anywhere from ten to fifty thousand dollars. Capital on Tap. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, if your credit is stronger, you can possibly go after um bigger credit cards um the there's a gm financial credit card right now for businesses um that offers um a great entry level interest rate the majority i'm not gonna say the majority but like a lot more than 40 percent of business credit cards are going to offer you that interest rate at zero percent interest for 12 months um the yeah. highest i've ever seen is about 18 months uh, i haven't been able to find one for 24 months so you want to try to aim for something like that um, and just shop around till you find a good credit card that fits you best. And it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stress to everyone, like, if you get your credit in line, the higher you get your credit score. And, and it really depends on what type of credit limits you have on your credit file. So if you're trying to go get a business credit card and, you know, your highest limit credit card is $2,000, there's a huge chance that nobody else is going to want to give you, you know, more than $2,000. Yeah, and on business, and on, on business credit, you're 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 more likely to get say like two or three times the limit of your personal credit lines. But like Mike said, um, if you got a two thousand, if you got max two thousand dollar credit limits, then four six thousand dollars, which really ain't gonna serve your purpose that much. Yeah, so right. Right now, I mean, luckily we luckily the way how our business is, was structured, we we've been usually mostly cash to pay for almost everything. We really don't have. Um, we don't have any business credit at all. Um, right now, I have um, the highest personal one I have is uh, for seven thousand. Okay. And luckily, since we've been working within that ninety day rotation, we're already used to okay, we're doing stuff now, but we know in ninety days it'll cover. So we're already in the loop now that now the checks are coming in. Right. Which, you know. Right. Once um, you get past that hump, then things get right. a lot easier. But so Mike, Mike and I were having this conversation before we got on the call, and it's funny that you actually come on and bring this up because we have two different philosophies about how we operate our companies with business credit. Uh, Mike is very proactive with procuring business credit, okay, which means he doesn't really need the money, but he knows that at some point in time he may want to do something big. All right. So he's actually working the system now to put himself in play, to have those relationships with the lenders that he knows he may need at some point in time. Now, with me, I went the opposite direction. I went the, hey, if I know I need to be carrying a balance uh, for you know a little bit of time, then what I'll do is I know my credit is good enough. I know my credit limits are, are phenomenal. I'll go get an 18, a, a 18 month, 0% APR credit card that I know I'm going to get guaranteed for $45,000, $60,000. Um, and so that's how I've been rocking mine, you know, and then I'll carry my balance for 12 months, pay it all off. And then I'll go until I know I'm going to need to make another large purchase or have, you know, maybe a home I want to flip or whatever I want to do. And I know that my credit is in shape enough. My business is good enough. My personal is good enough for me to procure those zero percent interest lines of credit. But at a certain point, if I want to do something big or if I absolutely need it, I've put myself in a very vulnerable position where I won't be able, like Mike, to go knock on a bank's door and say, hey, yo, I need one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. They're going to look at my business and be like, hey, bro, you ain't exercised that muscle, man. You too weak for that. Um, so even though I can go out and get the big lines of business credit when it comes to credit cards from American Express, uh, the big blue bank, um, pretty much anywhere, I can go get any credit card I want. But you have to you have to exercise that business loan muscle in order to grow that muscle to a place where you can pretty much do like Mike and just have them knocking down your door to give you money. Um, so, I, you know, I know what you're saying is kind of like. It's a positive thing in your brain, like, oh, we ain't never need the money, but you don't you, you never needed it until now. 
And so this is the exact scenario Mike and I were talking about, because in your position, Mike could just go knock on anybody's door and be like, hey, I need 250. And they're going to look at his track record and say, all right, you've paid us back seven loans and never defaulted, never been late, only ever grown those loans. Matter of fact, we have paid off your loans and refunded new loans for you and made more money with you. So he's actually right in this circumstance. He's correct. But the difference is he paid for that. Right. He paid for that through the point of getting loans that he didn't need, but he paid those loans back with that interest that came along with it in the terms that they granted. And he became best friends with the bank. I have avoided any of those fees. But on the back end of this entire situation, I may pay for it bigger later if if ever I'm in need as you are now. So I, you're a cautionary tale. I could possibly be a, a cautionary tale. Um, and Mike is is the one actually flexing the business credit muscle properly in this particular circumstance. So I, I would encourage you, bro, like when you get out of this situation, you might you might be too late to flex it now. But now you know what is possible out there. You might serve yourself, bro, to know to, to put yourself in a position to know that the money is going to be available when you need it by actually following some of Mike's, uh, you know, practices when it comes to actually procuring uh, and harvesting and gardening business credit. Uh, it, it's probably the smarter way to go. So I don't know how this is going to end up for you, bro, but I, I would definitely tell you like that, that I would say that's a smarter way to go. Yeah. Um, by not having that, that knowledge now where I have the opportunity to expand, I mean, and, yeah. and, and expand almost, almost maybe threefold. Yeah. Now we have to do it little by little and I actually have to turn work away because, you know, now, now we're booked almost a month in advance. And yeah. during these type of situations, especially hurricane situations, we can't have clients waiting that long. Right. You and know, it's we have to get bro, it's end at some point in time. And will you have capitalized or will you have missed it? And in this particular point, you're missing money. Um, yep. And I, I would be too. Uh, so, um, Mike, can you help him out after this, bro? You might, when you, what you might want to do is get what a, get what a consultation with Mike, and he might be able to put you on with some of the you know people that he's does done business with. Because Mike does nationwide business, man. So yeah, Mike, we we need to, we need to really talk about your revenue and what you're bringing in, and look at the different options you have. Um, because if your score your score has got to be above a six eighty, you know, for business lending, that's usually their entry level. Um, but if you're if you have enough revenue coming in. You know, you can you could potentially back something, but you got to be very cautious. And, you know, Jay made a really good point about, you know, me getting these loans. And the whole purpose is understanding that you you have to establish a relationship with these with these loan companies. And when you start the relationship, the relationship is horrible because the interest rates are horrible. You got to make weekly payments. Your situation, these these type of loans wouldn't fit you great. But if you have the funding to back it and to build these relationships, because at the end of the day, your business loans, any interest fees that you're paying on those business loans is a tax write off. OK, that's important to understand. That's something that a lot of people don't understand. And it's super helpful. But at the end of the day, you're spending cash. Right. OK. And if you can get through a quarter of the loan and pay off a quarter of the loan, they're going to they're going to try to offer you better terms. The longer you wait to get closer to the end of that term of the loan, the more they're going to try to get you into doing a refi, a refinance of that loan. And what they do is literally Jay have seen, has seen me do this, pay down half of the loan and they say, we're going to pay off the rest of this loan. So now this loan has been paid off on your business credit. You can see it on your business credit file. Okay. And then now they've given you, they paid off that loan and they've given you twice as much of the money as you had the first time, or sometimes four times as much. It just really depends on what type of relationship you have. But getting past those humps and doing the refi is really, really important because you start off at a horrible interest rate and then you refi and then now you're at a better rate, lower payments, longer terms and a better situation. OK. Hey, and, and it's real funny because, I mean, I'm a 70s baby. And the way how we went through the educational system was you were hoping to just get a job. Right. I'm, 50, I'm 52 now. And now I'll, I'm, I realize that if we had this kind of information, even at high school, our life could be totally different. But unfortunately, this was like this big old secret. And by the time we figured this out, you know, it's a little too late. I mean, yeah. I supposedly retired early and now I'm, I'm back in the game again. And luckily, my business is doing well. But I know I, I know I could do a lot more. But due to that lack of knowledge, 
that's where, you know, predatory lending could come involved and all yep. kinds of stuff like that. And that's yep. what I'm trying to avoid. So that's why I was always real cautious, like, okay, you know what? Thank God we got enough money to pay the bills, pay the credit cards, you know, pay whatever we need to pay. But then when this situation arises, all of a sudden it's like, oh, now we actually need <laughs> this credit in order for us to get to the next level. Yep. So, yeah, I, I really appreciate this information. And let me tell you, it's extremely valuable for us because we weren't taught this at yeah. all. We were never taught this. And it's really refreshing to see how you guys were actually putting that information out there. You know, for these younger guys, you know, know, you know, you're not guaranteed to be successful, but you have the opportunity to try. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. And, and, and congratulations on those contracts out there, man. And and good luck, man. I see them hard work. Them, them hands is hard at work, bro. I see them hands. <laughs> I see them hands, big dog. My hands are yeah. right there, bro. I'm soft out here. <laughs> oh yeah, we, we we tarp roofs. We do mold assessment, dry yeah. out, name it. We, we're out there. We're out there every single day, eight but, eight ten hours. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But the money, the money's good. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't sleep on it. Money's yeah. really good out here, man. So yeah, it, it's definitely a profitable business. But you have to you have to have you know that knowledge when it comes to this type of funding and stuff like True. this. Because you could, you could eat. There's a lot of guys I know already in the game. They're already ass out. Yeah, they you gotta know. You gotta know all sides, man. Because leaving money on the table, you can't ever get that back, bro. So um, I agree, man. Definitely. But I, agree. Uh, I definitely want to reach out to you, Mike, and see what kind of options I may have. Uh, so I, I guess what I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll DM you later. Yeah, man. I'll put, the link, I'll put the link in the comment right here in the comment okay. section so you can go, go after yeah. it. All right. It was, yeah. it was a pleasure, man. Be safe. You guys definitely need to do more of these. This has been very informative and it's going to help a lot of people, guys. We're real. trying to get more frequent, man. Both of our schedules are crazy. We both got young kids, man. We both run multiple businesses, bro. You know, but we, we, uh, here, here's, and appreciate you for joining, Andres, man. Appreciate you, man. Good luck out there. Um, I, uh, so, uh, this is, this is one of the things that Mike and I discussed about, people having the, the knowledge, but not really truly wanting to put it out there, right? Um, only getting on lives like this to sell you products, only doing this so they can give you just enough information to put out there. Hey, hit my hit the link in my bio for my boot camp or my course or my whatever. Um, when the reality of it is, is why not just give you everything and let you do with it what you will? And if you need us, you'll come back. And that's kind of the way our lives both work out. We've both helped an immense amount of people that have never paid us dime number one. And it's amazing. Um, and so, you know, the money will come to you when you're doing the proper thing. Um, and neither one of us are greedy dudes. We both live amazing lives, both have amazing families, but we both help more people than anybody else on this. And we both trust each other. And so my rep is not on the line when I'm dealing with him and the same way, vice versa. So, you know, it's good for me to be able to trust him and you guys can trust us, man. And that's, that's kind of the way things hopefully continue to rock. Um, Robert Baldwin, credit cards versus lines of credit. Which one is better? How do you feel about a company like Cabbage? Ooh, on deck, Blue Vine. Ooh, my God. Uh, <laughs> we got, we got, we got Jay Black. Jay Black, I see you down there. I see, at least I see your forehead. Uh, you know, we gonna, we gonna get you up in here as soon as we answer this question, Mike. <laughs> so I've it's dealt, I dealt with Cabbage. I dealt with on deck. I dealt with Blue Vine. I didn't, I didn't get any money from any one of them, dude. Really? I did not feel comfortable at all, man. I didn't feel comfortable at all. Maybe no, I'm just because, a punk when it comes to business credit, bro. No, I don't know. No, because because you got to remember, and this is kind of like what we talked about, is business lending is horrible. There's no business loan out there that's like, ooh, look at that. I get, They're going to give me 0% interest. That's amazing. They're going to give good. me 4% interest. Wow. Wow. They're only going to give me 8% interest. No, man. Business lending is horrible. Okay? All the way across <laughs> the board. Okay? Let's just go ahead and throw it on the table. Okay? Dude. When I get, uh, when I get into business lending, I understand what I'm getting myself into because I'm trying to get myself out of it, but I'm establishing a relationship with this with this lending entity. Like you have to build that relationship to yep. build that trust. On deck, um, I'm familiar with them. I have an, an active line of credit with them and an active loan with them. Okay. I, haven't, I haven't touched my line of credit. Um, there's another one called Funbox. Okay. Um, I've been rocking with Funbox, so I have a ten thousand dollar line of credit with. Funbox, um, that sounds like something on the hub, bro. Go ahead. <laughs> Funbox, is, Funbox has been around, bro. Okay, hey man, hey, man leave me so, out of this. We about to jack up the algorithm, bro. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> so on deck, um, 
their line of credit. I have a $10,000 line of credit. They do charge you a monthly fee just to keep the line of credit active if you don't use it, just so everyone Is, was knows. There, was there an origination fee? Um, there's always an origination fee with every type of lending and business well, credit. Go. Listen, I'm going to oh. tell you, this is what I'm saying. This is what people don't understand is there's so there's origination fees. They're going to hit you right off the top of the head like, <laughs> like a loan shark, okay? Right, right. And then they're going to hit you with the high interest rates, and you got to prove yourself to at least a quarter of the loan, okay? If you can prove yourself to at least a quarter of the loan, then you can refinance. If you can get to halfway through the loan, you can refinance again. I got I got my loan company right now kicking down the door trying to get me to send them bank statements so they can so they can refinance this loan. I said, nah, I'm not I'm good. I'm fine right now. Thank you though. I appreciate it. You know, um but- Mike, Mike, just so y'all know, Mike calls me every three weeks or so and he's like, Jay, <laughs> Jay, Jay. I'm like, what, bro? Jay, what, bro? <laughs> man, you won't believe it. What's going on, man? Who's who's trying to give you money now? Yeah. Man, they want to give me a hundred thousand. Jay, should I take it? Hell yeah, you should take it. Jay, nah, I ain't going to take it. I'm going to just take 30. Jay's, Jay's like, to be able to have those conversations, I'm going to just take 30. And know that in yeah. you know six months, they're going to be banging down the door to pay that 30 off to try to offer him another 150. This man has put himself in a crazy position to be able to get whatever he wants in the world if he finds the right opportunity to invest in. Uh, because number one, his business makes the capital to go ahead and be able to cover that loan no matter what. Number two, he's built those relationships. I may have to take after my boy. I don't need it. But I may have to do it. So, Robert, just so you get your answer, bro, the difference between credit cards and lines of credit, you no matter what credit card you get, if you get it from a reputable institution, there's not going to be an origination fee for you to get that that line of credit open. Uh, number two, typically speaking, I haven't come across a business card yet, bro, that's going to charge a monthly fee or even an actually, annual. actually, actually American Express's business card charges an annual fee. And I think one of Chase's does. But that's the super upper end. Yeah. But uh. Normal business cards don't charge an um, don't charge an annual or monthly fee. So I think the fees may be the difference in what you're looking at. Um, and then yeah. most credit, most business credit cards, if you got good enough credit, will offer you a zero percent interest rate for at least six months, usually 12 to 15 months. If you're really good, 18 to 21 months. So that's kind of hopefully that answers that question. And then also understanding the difference in a, in a line of credit and a credit card. You know, um, if you get a line of credit, um, Let's say they like, okay, um, my fund box, I think I, I have a $46,000 line of credit with fund box, fund box. Okay. And I can pull out <laughs> the minimum I can pull out is $500. Um, the maximum I can pull out is the 46,000. If I want to, you can choose any, any term you want. I can pull out a 500. I can pull out a 5,000 next week. I can pull out a 10,000 next week. I can pull out a 20,000 next week. Every single one of those will be structured completely different with completely different weekly payments. And okay? and deposit cash into your bank account. Correct. So you will, it's de- you will flexible deposit, as well. You will deposit that cash usually within 24 hours or 40 hours max once you initiate the transfer. So that line of credit is going straight liquidity into your business bank account. Good pickup. And then bro. within a week, they're going to start taking those payments. <laughs> they're not playing. People think I'd be lying, bro. When I tell you, like, once you procure a business loan, whether it's a line of credit or a straight up loan, when you take their money, they're asking back for it in a week. That yeah. the payments are due. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's that yeah. so you better have a way to give them their money back before you default on that loan. The worst thing that can yeah. possibly happen is your loan start to pay for itself. Yeah. If your loan starts to eat itself up, you're dead. You're dead. Yeah. You lost the game. So uh Jay Black, good uh Good question right there. Jay Black, we're going to let you in this train, big dog. What's going on, man? What's going on, fellas? Man, what's up? I appreciate left, you for joining, I left, man. I had left a comment in the, in the um, box saying that uh, how do you start a finish credit if you're a fresh time new on there? Okay, so what do you, what you're saying is like you have no credit, no good, no bad, nothing. No, no, I got, I got, my credit score is cool, but I'm a first time business owner. And okay. I was trying to figure out how do you get a credit card if you a first time business owner because I, I was this is a question that you need to spend 30 minutes with mike on okay i'm dead <laughs> as serious don't even i mean seriously bro seriously it's very it's very open-ended because there's a lot yeah. of factors um you know one can you qualify for a business credit card two do you have any revenue okay because that's no, gonna be the one, one no one are you properly structured 
Correct. To even be funded at all. So what you want is you want somebody to go through your stuff with you. Giving you okay. generic information on this question, bro, ain't going to help you. It's right. not. You want somebody to look at your situation and say, hey, man, you messed up right here. Here's what you need to fix. Right. We can tell you whatever we want to tell you right now. You're going to get off this live and go look at it and be like, I don't remember none of that. I didn't understand any of that. And now I can't ask questions. Do yourself okay. a favor, bro. This is one of them situations where I'm going to say pay the money. Get a personalized consultation. Mike will walk you through it. He has done it for himself very successfully. Okay. Let him give you the how do, I, um, how do I do that? Go through there. Like, uh, go there's, through a, there's some links in the comments. It says uh, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Here's right okay. there. One-on-one -on -one yeah. coaching with Mike. Okay. Click that link and set it up, and I'll talk to you then, bro. Do yourself okay. a favor, big dog. Don't shortchange yourself, man. All right. Spend the money. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. No, nothing. There's another Sorry, bro. Good. I didn't mean I didn't mean to plug you no, like that, fine. bro. But I I know I know when you need that per that personalized approach, man. This is that's you don't want to play with that. We got another good question right here. Also, what about liquidate liquidation credit cards with plastic? So, so it's most about fees and month versus weekly payments. So. I'll let you do this one. I think you can. I think it. I honestly think, first of all, what are you using plastique for? Robert, get on the live, bro, so we can talk. Because this is another <laughs> question where I got I got questions. I got questions, bro. You got questions. I got questions. I got questions um, for the question. I got questions for your question, man. I need to know what you're using plastique for because plastique can be wonderful, uh, but it can also be costly, bro. So are you what what purpose are you using it for? And will it yield anything more than what you're spending? Or will it will it get your purpose completed? Because if for anybody who doesn't know, Plastique will allow you to use your credit cards for things that you can't use your credit cards for by turning basically turning your credit card payment into cash and then sending that to whatever entity that you need to pay, i.e. you want to pay your rent with your credit card. Uh, but the, your company, your rent company doesn't take credit cards. Well, if you pay it through Plastique, Plastique will take the money off your credit card and then pay the rent with the check that they send through that. Now, how you liquidate a credit card through Plastique is you pay a company. Let's just say I paid Mike and I told my credit card company, hey, I'm going to, or I told Plastique, hey, I, need, I owe Limitless Culture $50,000 and I got a $60,000 credit card. I swipe my credit, not swipe my credit card, but I put my credit card information in. Plastique will charge my credit card for 50K, send Mike a check for 50K. Mike will send me a check for 45K because he's going to keep five, five, 5,000 for doing it. And now I got $45,000 in cash. That's how you liquidate a credit card with using plastique. Now he's asking about the, uh, so it's most about fee and month versus weekly payments. Plastique, once you're done with them, you're done with plastique. But now you got to pay back the money that you own your credit card. Now the good thing about this is that you're not going to be paying the cash withdrawal fee on the credit card. You're going to be paying, or you're going to be at zero percent interest if you have a zero percent interest card. So that's awesome. Your payments will be zero percent interest, or if you have hit the interest rate, whatever your current interest rate on that credit card is, will calculate your payments by that. So it really is, honestly, based upon what you want to use it for, big dog. So that's kind of like my first question. Hopefully that makes some sense. I mean, that was my question for your question, but my answer to the question that I saw, hopefully that made sense to you. So whatever your purpose is for, um, if you truly need to get the cash out of the credit card and you have no other way to fund your business, then it simply turns your credit card into a personal loan at that particular point in time. So doing that through Plastique is actually pretty useful. That's probably the best way to manufacture spin if you're going to try to do that. But just be careful. Oh, uh, if by the way, if your credit card company finds out you did that, they will cancel your card immediately. Trust me that. And American Express has several different ways of finding that out. I found that out the hard way. I lost two cards to American Express like that. So be cool, bro. American Express called me, dude. They called me because they traced the money that I got through Plastique. Uh, and they realized that I deposited the money into my bank account. Because my bank account is attached to my American Express business card. The idiot didn't even put it into a different bank account, bro. So. <laughs> <laughs> you live and you learn, dog. You live and you learn. <laughs> financial review. Financial, yeah, financial review. Yep. Yep. <laughs> financial review. Financial review. And I, I called all angry, bro. Why are you guys doing this to me? Because they froze. They freeze you, right? Yeah. They freeze you during the financial review. And I'm hot, bro. You know, I got two $25,000 credit lines through them bad boys. What's going on? Blah, 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 blah. 
Yeah, well, we noticed that you might be paying your own company with American Express funds. And we just wanted to kind of take a look at your transaction history and uh, possibly take a look at your banking statements, if you will. Will you if you can go ahead and submit those within the next two weeks, we'll go ahead and take a. If you don't submit them, we'll go ahead and close the account. I ain't even send that shit in. <laughs> I didn't Yo. even send it in. <laughs> well, people don't know for anybody that does not know what a financial review is on a credit card. That's when they ask you for bank statements. And my favorite, they may ask you for tax returns. Okay. They want, it all. They want to see it all. And if you don't supply them, they're going to shut you down. They close that account, man. So, yeah, That's you it. know, I'm not without my faults, bro. You know, we've all bumped our heads in this credit game, man. And I'm just trying to give y'all the game before you do the same. Uh, yo, it's been an hour and a half, man. I'm getting ready yeah, to get out of here and eat dinner with my family, bro. I know you yeah, got to go home. Too. Too. Um, I got to get home and eat dinner, too. I'm hungry, man. <laughs> Listen, you got anything to say you want to you want you got anything to say to close man you know first off i want to say thank you to everyone that came to the live make sure to share this send it with your friends like it comment man, it. they won't even like it they ain't more. sharing this shit i know <laughs> oh man so one thank you for subscribing thank you for following um if you're not a subscriber come following mike the credit guy right here on youtube you can find me on also on facebook as um limitless culture so you can find us out there. And uh, if you need any help from either one of us, you can find our bios and um, set up a call. Yeah, Thanks you guys so can find me at Just J Woodfin on any social media platform. Typically, if you type in Just J, I'll pop up first uh, on any social media platform. If you guys are following me and not following Mike, please do yourself a favor. If you're following Mike and not following me, please do yourself a favor and follow That's your true. boy. Other than that, I know you guys got plenty of places to get your credit information. But you're here with us. So I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all have a blessed rest of your night. All right. Take it easy. Peace.